Hi there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK into your homes, on your phones, wherever you're looking at me from. And um, welcome to the new year, if it's the first time you are locking by my channel. Thank you very much for passing by. Um, born in the UK, I'd just like to give a little bit of introduction. I'm born in the UK. I have, my parents are from Jamaica. I'm a Windrush child. I spent 11 um, years in the United States working for the government and then I spent one year in Angola on a peacekeeping mission and where else have I been? I've kind of visited places like um, South Africa you know for a short tenure but not enough to influence my my thought processes or the way I am. So yeah so England, UK, USA and Jamaica. I can't talk about England, UK. Duh. England, Jamaica, USA, and Africa. My four biggest influences. Anyway, what are we talking about today? We're talking about the genetically engineered or genetically edited embryo. But scientists. Um, three chi Chinese scientists, um, actually they've been imprisoned. One's been in prison for three years and his accomplices have been imprisoned for 18 months. But apparently um, three gene edited embryos have been born. They don't know when the third one was born but there's been two twins that were born in 2018 and the third one is 2019. Yeah, so it's a big hoo-ha, it's deemed ethnically um, improper and it's not allowed and I can understand, I can understand on the one hand, well let me just say what's happening. What these scientists have discovered is that they can change your DNA. Now, I can understand why the government would want to imprison people who can do that. I can understand why it's a big thing. Because can you imagine, our DNA is unique to each and every individual. They have spent thousands, millions on, you know, doing all these biometrics based on our DNA. And if somebody can meddle around with that and change that, and change the fact that, our DNA is no longer unique or consistent, then that's going to cause problems. So you can imagine, these three Chinese guys have got together, they were so pleased because what they did was they actually um, changed the DNA so that the two twin children would never be exposed to the HIV virus. And what they do, they've got this CRISPR um, Cas9 tool and what it does is the CRISPR part of it, it's got, it's like a, um, a search and find on a word processor. So there's apparently 5 billion segments of DNA. And what it does, it goes through these, the segments or the sequences, I should say, sequences of numbers. And it identifies all the letters or the numbers or the whatever they are, the digits or indices. And um, it can identify ones that are duplicated or the same. It can actually edit those DNA, the ones that they don't want or the ones that are harmful or unhealthful or unhealthy. And they can replace them with healthy um, DNA. And they're doing this on the human embryo. So, um, what can I say? These people, man. I mean, they're really playing God, aren't they? So what what they're reckoning to some point, at some point, not yet, they'll be able to change the colour of the eyes of people. Who knows, they might be able to change the colour of the skin. You might be able to get designer babies. And that is why I titled this video, um, I think I titled it, um, do, you, do you want a custom designed baby? Or can you imagine if you had a choice of what your baby would look like. It, imagine in this society where so many people are dissatisfied with the way they look. So many people have an idealised picture in their head of what 
perfect looks like. And we can see this with all these botched um, face, you know, um, plastic surgery. You know, we can see how people are dissatisfied with themselves. So can you imagine letting loose a set of people who can custom design their baby just how they want it? It would never be perfect. They'd want to change the nose. They'd want to change the eyes. They'd want to change the skin. They'd want to change the hair. They'd want to change everything. It would be chaos. But is that where we're heading? I don't know. I was asking a couple of colleagues at work and I said to one of them, if you wanted to, if you could custom design your baby, what would it look like? Now, she's a white girl. She's got long um, brown hair, very attractive, good genes. I think she's in her mid to late 30s, but, you know, no wrinkles or anything like that. I don't know if you could get wrinkles at 30, but anyway. So I said to her, what would you like? So she said, I'd like dark hair dark eyes and you know um skin darker skin um because she reckons it can fight diseases better it's more it's more endurable it's more durable so i asked an asian lady i said to her you know if you could custom design your baby what would you like want it to look like and she was there i think she felt a bit timid and a bit embarrassed i said we're only using the imagination you know, you're not committed. And the first thing she said is, well, I wouldn't want it to look like my husband. I'd want it to look like me. So already, those are the dynamics that would come into play. If people were allowed to design their own children. Now, what's, what's sinister about this is that not only can you design your own child, eventually... But because they're messing around with the DNA, it's not, you, if they make a mistake, they can't, they can't fix it. Also, it's handed down to generations. So if you decide that you want a child with blue eyes, that's going to go down the generations. So it's not, you're not just dealing with a child. You're dealing with a generation. And likewise, if they wanted to eliminate a race, all they've got to do is track that part of the DNA which gives colour. And if they edit that out and replace it with something else, you've wiped out a race. So, you know, they're talking about, well, when I say they, the government's talking about, oh, it's not ethically correct. It's not, um, you can't do experiments on humans. But do you know how many hu how many experiments they've done on humans? Okay, for this one, the positive could the positive is that they could actually heal um, genetic disorders. They can actually resolve that by taking you know by cutting and splicing and re-editing and modifying and put it back in the DNA. But also, it's um, more than that. It can be go the other way, like I said. You can actually wipe out um, a generation or a race if you get to know the combination, the sequences of numbering that make a person black. So that's the dark side of it. Now, when they're talking about, um, oh, they think it's unethical because to uh, experiment on humans, you know, I was looking up on how many human experiments there are. I mean, we know about the Tuskegee experiment where they had over 600 African-American males and they injected them with syphilis and they let them play it out. Even though they had a cure, they let them suffer the agony of going through syphilis to watch the process and the progress of how it worked. So many were disabled, they died, and goodness knows what. They also used to perform horrendous human experiments on people in prison. I'm going to read that out to you later. And people in the army. Actually, let me just find that one. Actually, horrendous. Well, let me not. Let me just go back to where I was starting with the um, with the gene editing tool. I don't want to jump too far ahead. Okay, so well, the gene editing tool. Um,
that's come to the rescue if you want to custom your baby in a few years time. Um, CRISPR, which is C-R-I-S-P-R, stands for Clustered Regularly Interspaced Short Palindrop Repeats. What a mouthful. Anyway, it's called CRISPR for short. And then Cas9 is the um, replace and the editing, the cut and paste editing tool as a part of this whole gene gene known um, um, uh, editing program. Okay, so CRISPR is the gene editing tool which identifies the faulty gene in the sense that if somebody has um, like stem cell disease or I don't know if they could do anything for sickle cell, but those kind of genetic diseases which identifies the faulty gene and case nine, Cas9 is the cut and paste editing tool. Together, it's like find, replace, cut and paste on your word processing document. Um, Hei Jiankui, the Chinese researcher, defied the law and proudly announced he had helped produce genetically edited babies to give them an immunity to HIV and has been found guilty of conducting illegal med medical practices and has been sentenced to, three years in, sentenced to three years in prison. You would have thought that that would have been a good thing. But, you know, they're thinking, if you allow somebody to do that, what is the next step? What are they going to do next? So, um... A court in Shenzhen found that he and two other scientists, Zhang Renli and Qin Jinzu, they got 18 months, he got three, um, three years, forged ethical review documents and misled doctors into unknowingly implanting gene-edited embryos into two women. According to Jinzu, a Chinese state-run press agency, oh, that's according to Jinzu, China's state-run press agency, one mother gave birth to twin girls in November 2018. It has not been made clear when the third baby was born. The court ruled that the three defendants had deliberately violated national regulations on biomedical research and medical ethics and rashly applied gene editing technology to human reproductive medicine. The unidentified twin girls had a single gene named CCR5, altered to make them less susceptible to HIV infection when their embryos were just a day old, according to Hay. That would be early enough to become incorporated in the, in the germline, meaning the resistance could be passed to future generations. Such far-reaching changes are prohibited in several countries, including the US. China has banned the development of genetically altered embryos beyond 14 days, but there is no specific punishment attached to the regulation. The experiments were performed on human embryos. The researchers collected non-viable embryos from IVF clinics. In the first stem cell research experiment, he edited and cut the DNA where the disease was and then modified and inserted the healthy genome into the gene sequence. Sounds very complicated, but like I said, it's like cutting and pasting. I guess you just have to know where in the DNA you're going to cut and paste, especially when you think there's five billion sequences. How are they supposed to know which part to cut and which part to paste? That's why they say it's unethical. They don't even know the long-term implications. Qualified scientists can change the gene to make it behave differently, i.e. change the colour of the eyes or replace unhealthy genes. They've already edited mosquitoes to prevent them from catching malaria. People are dreading up. They have also um, altered early embryos to change eye colour, but it will affect the offsprings and gener generations to come. This raises at least two issues. The first is the ethical issue surrounding the use of human embryos for scientific research. But as we know, they have been using humans for, for, for scientific research for years, since the 1700s. And I'm going to tell you, 
1796, Edward Jenner, an English doctor, noticed that dairy maids seemed to be protected against smallpox because of their contact with cowpox, a, mild, a milder virus that affected cow udders. Sorry. Jenner took sub samples of matter from inside a dairy maid's hand lesion and injected it into an and injected it into an unknowing eight year old boy. James Phipps Jenner took samples of matter from inside the dairy maid's hand lesion and injected it into the unknowing eight year old boy. How did they know that that? Han May didn't have some kind of disease or something. And they're to cut in her, taking out matter and injecting it into an eight-year-old boy. These people are dread, you know. In the following days, Phipps developed a fever, lost his appetite and felt discomfort in his armpit. However, he soon recovered. Two months later, Jenna injected Phipps with the smallpox virus. While it might have killed the boy, he was unfazed. From this experiment, Jenna created the first smallpox vaccine, which stems from the Latin word for cow. So that's how they're giving out, you know, somebody had to be sacrificed. I mean, he didn't die, but he had to be sacrificed in order to find the vaccine. And that's what they're saying. They have to test it on humans. So while Jenner is credited with saving more lives than any other human being, his test on Phipps wouldn't pass modern experimental standards because the young boy did not consent to the testing and nor did his parents. Then from 1918 to 1922, I'm just giving you examples of where they have um, performed research on humans because they're saying that's why they threw those guys in jails, because as they said it was unethical to perform research on human embryos, whether it's human embryos or humans. It's still, to me, unethical, but yet they did it. And so I'm just giving you a couple of examples. So from 1918 to 1922, inmates at California San Quentin State Prison were subjected to numerous medical procedures, including receiving transplanted testicles from recently executed prisoners. During the research headed by Dr. Leo L. Stanley, many men received transplanted sex organs from rams, goats and boars. No wonder there's so much bloody diseases around the place. Tuberculosis treatments were also tested on prisoners in exchange for clemency and 400 inmates at Stateville Correctional Centre in Illinois were exposed to malaria in the hope of finding a cure. In the book Life Plus 99 Years, inmate Nathan Leopold wrote, No one squawked. They all took it like men. The fact, the fact of the matter is they're going to exchange it for clemency, but they could die. So what is the point? Up, to, up until 1960s, about 90% of pharmaceutical research was done on prison inmates as drug companies needed large pools of test subjects. Prison inmates testing ended in 1970s. That is terrible. And then, of course, like I said, the Tuskegee st um, study of untreated syphilis in the Negro male. Tuskegee syphilis experiments, 1932 to 1972. And the that was the continued testing of unnecessary and frequently risky pharmaceuticals on human volunteers. And the only thing is that they weren't volunteers because they didn't know what they were volunteering for. So they're volunteers in one sense, but they didn't know that... You know, they were injecting them with syphilis and all sorts. So 600 African-American men, 399 had the syphilis, became participants. They were given free medical exams, free meals and burial insurance. I'm sure they needed the burial insurance as recompense for their participation and were told they would be treated for bad blood, a term in use at the time referring to a number of ailments, including syphilis when in fact they did not receive proper treatment and were not informed that the study aimed to document the progression of syphilis without treatment. 
Penicillin was considered the standard treatment by 1947, but the treatment was never offered to the men. Indeed, the researchers took steps to ensure <clears throat> that the participants would not receive proper treatment in order to advance the objectives of the study. Although the study was originally projected to only last six months, it continued for 40 years. And then we had from 1956 to 1970, mentally retarded children held at Willowbrook State School in Staten Island, New York, were infected with hepatitis so that doctors there could track the, uh, the spread of viral infection and see how it responded to gamma. Can you imagine deliberately infecting children? with hepatitis and because they're mentally retarded they probably couldn't do anything about it that is that is unethical they wanted to see how it responded to gamma globulin injections more than 700 children were infected this school was closed in 1987 after a public outcry about overcrowding and the filthy conditions. So not about the um, experimenting, you know, but about the overcrowded conditions and how dirty it was. In 1993, the National Academy of Sciences exposed a series of chemical weapons experiments stretching from 1944 to 1975, which involved 60,000 American GIs. At least 4,000 were used in gas chamber experiments. In addition, more than 210,000 civilians and GIs were subjected to hundreds of radiation tests from 1945 through to 1962. That's relatively recently, you know. Imagine using people to test stuff like that. Such dangerous. I mean, what do they get out of that? There was one, there was one, I think it was in, uh, I don't want I know it's a part of Asia. I don't want to say it was Hong Kong, but they actually, as a part of experiments, cut limbs off and dissected part of the bodies without no anesthetic. Oh, I just cannot imagine to see how fast the blood would flow. In January 1944, a 17-year-old Navy, 17, you know, Navy seaman named Nathan Schnurman volunteered to test protective clothing for the Navy. Following orders, he donned a gas mask and special clothes and was escorted into a 10-foot by 10-foot chamber, which was then locked from the outside. Poisonous gases used in chemical weapons were released into the chamber and for one hour each day for five days the seamen sat in this noxious vapour. On the final day he became nauseous. His eyes and throats began to burn and he asked twice to leave the chamber. Both times he was told he needed to remain until the experiment was complete. Ultimately Schnurman collapsed into unconsciousness and went into cardiac arrest. When he awoke, he had painful blisters on most of his body. He was not given any medical treatment and was ordered to never speak about what he experienced under the threat of being tried for treason. For 49 years, these experiments were unknown to the public. So saying that using human embryos for such positive research and it is not dismissed for negative research is ironic. So I can understand that creating designer babies could be taken to the extreme, but I'm wondering if it is about designer babies or is it about messing around with people's DNA that the government is worried about? Is that why they're clamping down on it so swiftly? Because can you imagine if they start cloning humans? It's going to cause havoc. They're not going to be able to control us in the way that they want to. You've got people messing around with their DNA. Can you imagine? So, there is also the question of editing going wrong, and if it goes wrong, they can't find where it went wrong, and the anomaly is handed down to generations.
Without total control of the DNA editing process, the outcome for the baby born from a technology like this one is completely unknown. So, I mean, I jumped from, you know, designing babies to um, research on humans because, I mean, it was the research on humans or human embryo that they found out that they can um, create genetically modified children. And so, you know, and it's a shame that so many people, human sacrifices have been made in, you know, for the sake of medicine or to find cures for medicine or to, because that is what, that's what's happening here. They're using these, they're using humans, you know, to create medicine. But anyway, I just thought I'd share that with you. I hope you found it interesting. Maybe not useful, but interesting. Bye-bye.